Welcome back to the channels Tapa Alho Azul and Super Academico. Let us keep the reading of my book Phenomena. Today we will read the chapter 21. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's go. Chapter 21 June of 1974 I was graduating from Harvard. The report on the expedition in Australia and the release of a book on the same research had anticipated my graduation. Different from my first book, that one was considered of greater scientific value, with information gotten with the tools taken on the expedition, besides the ghastly photos ordered by the University of Melbourne after the end of the work. And that is why they anticipated my graduation. A lot in the academic life was obsolete before the magnitude of experiencing a paranormal phenomenon, but the scientific merit was necessary in order to keep a connection with reality. After all, maturity had also reached me at that level. I tried not to feel superior to any other student, after all, everyone has his merits and limitations, including me. Yet, the perception I had before paranormal phenomena put me in an advantageous position which only very few people in the world can enjoy. I am able to see my real object of study, just as a physicist who sees the subatomic particles that form matter. That was food for thought. In many aspects, this was different from my high school graduation. It was not just because this is a university or even Harvard. There was a cold and calculating atmosphere in the air. The lobby was packed and everybody applauded at the calling out of each name, but there wasn't done with the same warmth and friendliness as in high school. My family was there, they were the ones I was mostly pleased to see. There were also a few friends there. Eddie and Ranha were there as well. They were not dating each other anymore, but they were still close friends. Eddie had graduated the year before and Ranha was still a junior in the social studies department. At last, she seemed to have found her path, like all us did. Perhaps the indifference I sensed in the ceremony had to do with the fact that I was surrounded by a bunch of people I hardly knew. All of them were ahead of me up to a certain point. I felt that, in spite of having to read my second book, for now it was part of the regular parapsychology coursework curriculum, they still saw me as a freshman. That didn't really bother me too much. I didn't crave for admiration, only respect, and I did have that from the students, professors, as well as the entire academic community. It was weird being so young and having so much to teach. I never stopped reminding myself that it disturbed people. The innocent youth seemed to work as a magnet for dispersion and detachment. That's probably why a graduation at the university wouldn't attract the spirits who enjoy sharing happy moments. There was a bit of pressure on each diploma that was handed, our concern with the future. That was unavoidable. Only time can tell one that he cannot plan his life away, all he can do is intend to remain on the right path. I remember this now and I make a happy parallel with the Aborigines' demands when they agreed to host a research team. Everyone had to be younger than 22 years of age. The cheerfulness of the simple and innocent moments of youth seemed to attract the spirits into our world and the Aborigines knew that. I was happy to graduate. My family congratulated me and do did my friends. A good share of the academic community that was there insisted in coming up to me. I never got used to that kind of thing. That was power that came from my power. Being a celebrity is a very strange thing. It felt like that when I was young and still feels so nowadays. During a certain period of my life, I nearby these people, family, friends and the academic community, especially the latter one which I am a part of today. I presently teach at Harvard and lecture in several parts of the world. I still feel a great deal of pleasure when I travel and learn about new cultures, different lifestyles, etc. However, there's one little thing that I resent today, the longing for the paranormal phenomena that no longer, which I stopped seeing. As I aged, they decreased their intensity and frequency till they stopped happening for good. I remember all of them very vividly. I can just close my eyes feel each emotion all over again. Yet, it seems that having a greater perception of things that do not meet the standards when you're young is true. I had already written that in one of my many published books. And I felt that at each year that went by. Ever since the day of my graduation at Harvard, my life has been a sequence of accomplishments. I held and still hold both power and knowledge. However, like everybody else, my life has also have its ups and downs. But, although it might look like that, I haven't come to an end yet. I don't even know what the end feels like. Up to this day and age, I remember that dream I had where Donnie uttered those words to me. Maybe I do miss the phenomena. Thus, I decided to do something today that I haven't done for the past 20 years. 
When I look back, I feel that, in spite of everything that I've already accomplished in life, my house, my books, my reputation in the academia, and even the blessing that my family is still alive, although they live far away, I still have the need to live through the only moment of my life which I wasn't able to control. And that's a strong word, because nothing in life can really be under our control. Yet, out of all experiences I had working, studying, and living, I need to go back to Ols Park. I don't know if the end is there. After all, there's where Donnie was when he said that to me. I just need this one final mediation. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Bye.